Hey guys, second players here. I'm Keith. Carl with me as always. So we're actually doing something a little bit different today. Uh, we were actually put in a horror tag uh, with Douglas Beamer. Twitter handle is at at seven minutes or less. So if you want to check him out, please do so. We'll make sure we put that on here so you can see everything and whatnot. Um, so basically, he talked about movies and, and whatnot. We decided to incorporate movies and what we do, which is, is gaming. It's what we love. Right. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so uh, how do you want to start this off, man? You want me to go first? Hey, yeah, go, go ahead. Go okay. first. Okay, <laughs> cool, cool, cool. So we're going to start with movies first. All right, to follow Douglas and what he did. Okay. So for me, my top three horror movies that I, that I really, really enjoy. Okay, this is just my opinion. Number one would be The First Alien. Okay, now a lot of people don't realize this. Well, maybe a lot of people do. You just don't hear it a lot. Or I don't. Um, that movie is actually classified as a horror movie. Uh, I mean, it is sci-fi, but if you think of it, it is to a point a slasher. You have one super strong figure hunting down people one by one on this enclosed ship. Right. Um, so essentially, yes, uh, horror. But. Um, and we always say his name wrong every single time. Oh, okay. uh, Geiger, 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 Geiger. It's E. You, you, I think you you're supposed to pronounce the E. Geiger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, without <laughs> his design, like he really just put that little bit of polish on it. Right. Um, and you know, people that go on about Alien, they're like, "Oh, it's a sci-fi movie." Well, sci-fi is a genre kind of like fantasy. Like yeah. it. It doesn't mean what the movie is. It just means elements that go into the story. Right. So uh, another great example of a good sci-fi horror is um, The Event Horizon. Mm, um, okay, I actually haven't seen that one. Yeah, it's... I mean, you, you can have both in a movie, mm -hmm. and I, I think a lot of people get... Uh, it's just uh, rare to see them put together well. Right. I'm. Uh, there, there's one that's coming to mind that I can't... I can't remember the name of, but it was it was a cheesy one in the nineties. I remember <laughs> watching; it was really bad. Oh man! Um, I think the movie uh, Species. I think that oh, was a stab at it. I, yeah, I think that's actually the one I'm thinking of. Uh, I remember that as a kid. I was always like, I want to watch that. Yeah, just because that girl was like so hot back then, you know. Or yeah, whatever. and she had like a tail. That, yeah. That's the scene I was remembering, like yeah. the the awkward monster sex scene. Like. <laughs> I never got to. I've never seen it to this day. So. All right, so that's that's the first one. So for my second one is the original classic Halloween. Okay, now it's gonna it's funny you're gonna see the differences here, but for <laughs> me that movie ever since I watched it as a kid I loved it from like the the cult following behind it the the original mask was a William Shatner mask Captain Kirk. Okay, <laughs> that shows how low budget this thing is. They went and bought it spray painted it or painted it white. And, uh, I think they turned it inside out and yeah. then painted it white or something like that. Yeah, like. something, but. <laughs> So William Shatner is really, you know, the, the, the killer in this movie, but it really spawned uh, so much after that. They, they credit the movie Halloween, the original one, as the birth of the slasher genre. Right. Okay. There were some touches of it before with Psycho and whatnot, but no, because uh, Friday the 13th came after Nightmare on Elm Street, Child's Play. It just kept rolling after that. Right. So, and I think you had said that the Halloween series was, uh, we had mentioned in another video, it was essentially supposed to be some kind of... Uh... Yeah, the original idea was it was yeah. going to be an anthology series. And every year on Halloween, a new scary movie was going to come out. Right, yeah. Um, I think they really messed that up with the sequel finishing the story of the yeah. first one. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then when Halloween 3 came out, which I actually like Halloween 3. Man, that's crazy. Um <laughs> It was so different, people didn't like it because the precedent had already been set yep. that this was about Mike Meyer. Yeah, and um, I think the the idea was neat. That yeah. what they should have done was Halloween three should have been Halloween two, in my opinion, and then they could have finished the story, how made Halloween yes. two, Halloween three. Yeah, and I think it would have done better. Yeah, because. Not not talking bad about it, but they've made so many using the same formula yeah. that it's it's kind of gotten tired. Like, and there's a new one actually coming out. I saw it online not long ago. But I will say this: the uh, 
One and two, great. Mm -hmm. Three, for me, I watched as a kid and I was like, what is this? Right. So I've never watched it again. I think four and five, um, mm, but what's crazy, random fact, the girl in four and five, that I think she's related to Michael somehow, mm -hmm. she plays one of the girls in the Rob Zombie remake. Right. It's so it's crazy. But anyways, the Rob Zombie remakes are good. First one's accurate, second one, whew, But I mean. That's Rob Zombie. Yeah, Rob you Zombie. You know, but anyways. Yeah, so it's done something. Uh, so my third and final uh, for the video with a uh, favorite horror movie would be, big guess here, is Friday the 13th, <laughs> but it's part three, okay? Part three, very important because that's the one where Jason finds the hockey mask. Right. That's where that happens, okay? Because the killer in the original was actually his mother, which is Pamela Voorhees. Right. Um, so, and then the second one, he was just big and disfigured, and he had a burlap bag. The second one's really awkward. I yeah. watched it again recently, yeah. and it, I mean, it's its a Friday the 13th movie, but it's right. not very... And it uh, still was low budget, like, right. it still wasn't like on that Hollywood... Yeah, cheese. It got to later. <laughs> like it. I mean, I'm a big fan. It got bad. Wasn't okay. there one in space? Jason X. Yeah. <laughs> like, see, okay, guys. I, I was born on a Friday the Thirteenth. Okay, so for me, I had this weird as a kid. Uh, even I have tattoos right here on my forearms, and it's in the font of the movie font of the Friday the Thirteenth. So like, it's <laughs> you know, it's, I'm weird like that. But anyways, um, they said this was huge for the Jason franchise. Just really quickly because. He actually, they had the bag on him, and um, the Elephant Man, mm -hmm. which is probably a lot of people that don't know what that is, but there's a part in that movie where he has that bag over his head. Right. And they were scared that eventually they were going to go, oh my gosh. They're making fun yes. of. Yes, or yeah. they're, they're ripping it off of. And right. The, so they said they had to find something, and short story, long story short, they found a hockey mask. Iconic. Right. They said after that, they said, okay. I mean, wash and repeat. If you think about it, they could have used anything. Um, and them settling on the hockey mask is kind of interesting. Uh, yeah. I, I, I like to kind of imagine a different world where um, they picked something else. Right? Yeah. Um, um, because I, I feel like it's not the hockey mask that, that made it iconic. It's the movie franchise that made hockey masks iconic. That's true. That's so, true. I think it was just the timing thing because it's not like they said what how they knew it really like picked up mm -hmm. was they said the next year at Halloween they they were like hey right. <laughs> everyone's wearing hockey masks no one was wearing burlap bags before that or you know right. what I'm saying so it's it's kind of crazy and maybe it was just that little thing they needed to yeah go I don't know and I and I do say this they they went too far with it like I watched them all to a point like at right. one point in my life. It just went too far. Well, a lot of those 80s era slashers ended up going a little too far. So, um, but I mean, you can't blame them. Um, they they started making a lot of money and they got really popular. Yep. And I mean. What do you do? Yeah. So. <laughs> and that, you know, Jason, out of all the horror antagonists, or would you say they're antagonists or protagonists? I mean, they're the main. <sighs> you know, they're they're supposed to be the bad guy. Yeah, but that's who you watch <laughs> but, the movie but, for. But yeah, you you, <laughs> you you don't watch the movie going, oh, I'll kill him this time. Yeah. You know, you, you watch the movie because like, you want to... How does he come back? Yeah, how you... How does he come back? So it's, yeah, it's kind of one of those, like... Either way, either way, <laughs> out of all of them, Michael Myers, Chucky, all of them, no one has killed more than Jason. Right. And that's because there's so many Friday the 13th movies. Right. That's the, that's the point, okay? So, uh, just slow it down and keep the, the legacy strong, okay? <laughs> All right, brother, so you're three for yeah. movies. So, I, I have a hard time picking favorite movies. It's hard. Um, this yeah, is hard yeah, for me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard for me. But um, while you're very much into slashers, yeah. I'm not so much. I, I enjoy them, but they're, they're not my real cup of tea. Right. Um probably my first one on the list would be um the reanimator it's oh, okay it's okay. an adaptation of a lovecraft um story a short story but uh, um curious case of herbert west uh albert what uh, it i read i, I i've read it um, yeah and the, you read a lot yeah so i i get mixed up yeah um, the movie 
does the story a little better than the story. Really? Um, that's it, rare. It, it, at least that's that's how I feel. And that's one reason I like it. That's um, rare. Because Lovecraft has a tendency to kind of uh, get off topic a little bit. Mm-hmm. And, um, I mean, he his his stories are really great. And if you've never read Lovecraft, I, I suggest it. Um, but... Um, that one particular story is just kind of meandering it feels Mm -hmm. and the movie kind of i don't want to say spices it up but it kind of does it it adds an element that's kind of there but missing in the story and it's cheesy cheesy 80s practical effects too and a bunch of stupid events uh hey um it's it's definitely one of the ones i suggest you watch if you're awesome looking into like cheesy 80s horror yeah um <laughs> i need to watch that yeah i'll have to sit down sometime and watch it yeah reanimator um my number two um and and i ha- i had a hard time picking one mm-hmm. but i'm a fan of the di- of james wan or Wan. i'm not particularly sure how you pronounce his <laughs> last name um it's like the Ge- geiger giger thing yeah all over again um as a director i like him mm-hmm. um he as as some of you may know he he wrote the original saw um and i'm not a huge fan of the saw movies i'm not i i i, I get why you could like them but i'm i'm kind of not into torture porn um to me it's another franchise that should have stopped yeah um and you know he he wrote the original and i want to say he directed two or two or three yeah um but he he's he's been producer on most of them since but he's if if you read interviews from him he says he does that just for the money because there's movies he wants to make right like insidious and the conjuring and I, me being a fan of supernatural horror, right? Um, I really enjoy his directing style. Mm. Uh, the stories of Insidious and The Conjuring are kind of, I mean, they're they're bare bones. Yeah, um, they're scary movie by numbers. But that's not what makes him good. What makes him good is his directing style, uh, the mm. shots he takes, the the small character interactions. It. He's really good at building an atmosphere. Yeah. And I think that's really key to a good horror movie. Yeah. Um, and um, I was I was checking some stuff earlier today, just, you know, looking at his IMDb, seeing what he's doing. Um, apparently, he's directing a reboot of the Mortal Kombat movies. Dang, I had heard so, that there's supposed to be some reboots. Right, so I'm I'm kind of interested to see how that goes. I mean, it's it's not horror, but it's it's just kind of an interesting side note. Well, Mortal Kombat's one of those things that it's almost it's dark. But yeah, you have to have a certain kind of eye to look at it and go, I like it. Well, I mean, you if know? if anyone's going to treat it yeah. right, it'll be the writer of Saw. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could see that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, and my third movie is, uh, I'll, I'll say it's better as a book, but it's still a good movie. Um, John dies at the end. Ah, yes. Um, and it's, earlier when I was talking about how genres can go together, Mm -hmm. um, you have horror here and you have comedy here. (laughs) Yep. And then you end up with meat monsters and dick jokes somewhere in the middle and that's John dies at the end. And it's so good it's like a like a grilled cheese sandwich. Yeah. Like it, it's it's smooth, it's real good. Yeah. Um it's it's definitely a good book. Uh definitely a good book series. Um yes. there's John dies at the end. Um this book is full of spiders. Seriously don't touch it. Mm-hmm. And uh what the hell did I just read? Um all of which are wonderful books. Um and the movie so, so the situation in the book is it's kind of a collection of stories. The, right. the first book, at least. The, the second two kind of are a single story. Yeah. But the first is more like a short story collection. There's there's three main stories. And the movie kind of mashes them together. Um, 
but um, it was directed by um the the You're same than me. Yeah, the the same guy that did Phantasm and Bubba Hotep um he's got a very kind of unique style there's a lot of practical effects in the movie um it's uh it's it's quite good i mean the dick jokes um needless nudity and exploding jamaican guys like, <laughs> um it's <laughs> It's definitely uh, worth a watch if you haven't seen yeah, it. Yeah, so. my one of my favorite parts in that book is you had told me about it, and mm -hmm. you know it was your book, and you're like, here, borrow it. And I'm like, okay. And then there's a part where they got those testaments. Oh yeah. Yeah, like they had their men's had like Bible scriptures on them, and then like they were using them as weapons and yeah, enemies or not enemies and things like their games, but yeah, like they're blowing up and stuff from these mints. And I remember just reading it, just laughing so hard, like what. The, there's a possessed dog at one point yeah. and they like fling it in the room and they're like come on come on come yeah. on and it eats it and then it just kind of sits there for a second and goes yeah. to lick itself and then boom yeah <laughs> that's the main part I was trying to say without saying it yeah yeah like it was just so funny because it's like you want to take it serious because it, it would be like serious if you saw that but yeah. reading it it's almost like I don't believe that. Well, I mean, it was, the, it was well written. Yeah, the the third book <clears throat> includes a flaming pneumatic dildo gun. <laughs> so, uh, just as an example of the level of insanity you're <clears throat> getting into, if you oh my god, uh, start looking into the series. <laughs> so, but anyway, moving on to games because we, we hey, do games that's what and we do. Yeah, yeah, we we can't talk about our favorite horror stuff without talking about games so. games yeah, yeah awesome for sure so games now again this list for me is just in my opinion how they impacted me how they stood out to me because you know any gamer knows this like you, you can play a ton of games but there's always those games that do something to you right mm -hmm. and some way or another you're like wow I love that so for my my number one would be Dead Space okay first time I played this I just it was random like I don't remember being promoted a lot I don't remember anything I was just like what's this what's right. this box art with the hand floating in space like <laughs> let me let me pick this up and before i know it i am just like give me more you know like all on this <laughs> uh it was amazing just like the storyline silent protagonist isaac clark um and you know what's crazy about this is from here the second one was good okay yeah and the third one you know and that's EA. the that's the end of it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the thing about it was this they said the first one they actually made it hard but they didn't mean to Right. But it was a survival horror game in space. Mm -hmm. They said, like, there was moments in Dead Space where you'd always be, like, low on ammo. Or that's why Dead Space 2, they ramped it up a little bit. Oh, right. here's some more ammo. And it became kind of... Had action spots. Right. So, anyways, Dead Space, great one. I mean, if you have not played it, yes, it's PS3. Yes, it's older generation. Please. Or it can get it on Steam. Like... I don't know if it's on no. Steam. Well, either I, way, like find a way to play it. It's I, amazing. I think it may be on Origin. So EA. Oh yeah, yeah. that's right. You did tell me about yeah, that. Yeah, EA doesn't put very many games yeah. on Steam. So yeah. So either way, if you can get your hands on it, you know, do so. Okay. Um, uh, also for me, uh, Resident Evil Two. Now that, you know, I'm pumped about this remake. Um, especially, <laughs> I loved Resident Evil Four. I know it went more action, right. but if you could get that control scheme with the low ammo environment yeah. of Resident Evil 2, oh my gosh. Like, I want to be scared. Um, I've told you this story before. I never had a PS1, so I never <laughs> played Resident Evil 2 when it first came out. Uh, 64 came out, or I had a 64, it came out on 64, it was ported. I was like, oh my god, okay, i am got to get this. So we get, uh, me and my mom get it. I'm in seventh or eighth grade, no, eighth grade, eighth grade. So I come home, it's like 10 o'clock at night. I put it in the, the 64, never played it, you know, no strategy guys, no internet, you know, <laughs> turn off all the lights in my room and I'm sitting there playing it and I was just so terrified. Um, and it was a good feeling because that was my first horror game experience. Right. That was it. I'd watched a ton of movies, but to be in control and in these situations, it was awesome <laughs> for me, you right. know, and now it's laughable now, like, hey, <laughs> Ward, what are you doing? You know, uh, uh, it's yeah. Okay, kind of off topic, but you mentioning your that is your first war game experience. Do you know what my first war game experience was? <laughs> what was it? Echo the Dolphin. 
Oh, yeah? Um, <laughs> uh, I gotta hear this one. So, Echo the Dolphin is a, is, is, it's a game on Genesis. You, yeah. You, you play as a dolphin. You're in the ocean. It's yeah. really relaxing. And by the end, you're fighting a giant fucking alien trapped in a spaceship as it's trying to eat you. I never um, beat that game. It's really dark, really creepy. Do you ever fight um, sharks in there? Uh, yeah, but they're not too much of a threat, oh. um, if I remember. That that might have been the second one where you fight a shark. But it Echo the Dolphin is one of the earliest <laughs> like games that at some point becomes a horror game that uh, I can think of. Like, right. Uh, anyway, sorry. <laughs> no, that's cool, man. I, that's awesome right there. <laughs> so my last one is... Um, now, there's a lot of Silent Hill games out there, and I know people are fans of Silent Hill. I've always been more of a Resident Evil guy. Okay, I've always kind of noticed... You'll find a few that play both, but it's either one side of the fence or the other. Okay? For me, the one that stands out for me is Resident Evil The Room. Okay, funny story. Uh, there once was a day, you know, for those that don't remember... <laughs> You wanted to play a game. You didn't go to Redbox. You went to a, a game store and had a membership card, and right. you swiped it. And I rented a game for five days, Silent Hill: The Room. I'm like, okay, let's play it. And essentially, you're stuck in this room, your apartment, and you can't get out. And things happen when your character is asleep, and he wakes up. He's like, did that happen? And then it does happen, you know. And I literally. I want to say I got like three or four hours in. Like, I, I know that sounds horrible. I know it's like, what? But there was a point in the game where your your toilet explodes out of your bathroom. You go down in there. And you look out the window. You see this girl that stands out. And she's going into the, the subway. Long story short, she gets injured. She gets like a gut wound. She's bleeding. And then you wake up in your bed, right? And you're like, oh, okay. Everything's cool. And you look out the window. And then you see them bringing the body out. Sheets over it. But it has the blood right there. Um, and then I played a little bit past that and it got a little, it, it kept getting deeper. And I yeah. was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm good. And I, I literally turned off my system, put it back in the case <laughs> and just set it down and thought about it. I'm going to play something else. And yeah. then I was like, nope. And I returned it back, got extra credit and got another game. <laughs> so that game always stuck in my mind. Like, right. why did that game do that to me? I don't know. And you know, that, that one gets a lot of hell from... Mm. Silent Hill fans, and I, I'm a Silent Hill fan. Um, it's Silent Hill games aren't on my list um, just because I kind of wanted to talk about games people might not have played. Yeah, see, but um, it, it's I'm I'm definitely a Silent Hill guy. I think Silent Hill that's Silent Hill Four, um, the Room. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it was um, the fourth one. Has the unfortunate um, effect of being a Silent Hill game. Yep. I think if it were just a horror game without the Silent Hill name, the room, yeah, it would, it would be a lot more light. Yeah, but people compare it to Silent Hill one, two, and three, mm -hmm. which are different. It's it's kind of it's the Resident Evil four of the Silent. Well, I mean Silent Hill four. It's the, yeah. yeah. Um, it does things a little different, and people don't like it because of that. Yeah. But I, I think it's still a good game mm -hmm. if you look at it by itself. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So after, those are my three. So All right. you're up for the games here. <laughs> so um, again, with games, uh, it's kind of hard. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I decided I would try to talk about some games that people might not have played. Mm -hmm. But before that, um, I, I want to talk about amnesia the dark descent for a little bit yeah yeah um and i'm i suggest if you like horror games you play it i don't think it's the best game in the world um i, I know there's a lot of people that that are like oh it's the best best horror experience ever and um you know i'm, I'm hearing the same things about about outlast and outlast 2 that mm -hmm. I heard about Amnesia when Amnesia came out. So I'm, I got you. But anyway, um, Amnesia the Dark Descent has a moment um, that I feel is almost perfectly done. Mm -hmm. And that's, there's a part where you're in kind of the basement and it's flooded um, up to your like knees or waist. It's it's kind of hard to tell. Oh, that sounds horrible. Um, and you know, there's all these things floating in the water, like crates and boxes, and uh, 
you know, things that float. Um, and the water isn't really your main concern. It's something invisible in the water that's your main concern. Mm. And you, as you start to move around, it starts to come at you, and all you can see is the little splashes as they... Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And then if it, if it gets to you, you die. Yeah. Like it just... It's done. Um, you learn that it's apparently blind. Like, if you throw something in the water, it'll go to right. what you throw. So it's kind of a really tense, like, almost like a platforming area, mm -hmm. like, in a first-person game. So yeah. it's very awkward and nerve-wracking. Like throw something, go to the next thing, yeah. chill, throw something, go to the next You have platform. to solve puzzles yeah. and levers and do all this stuff. And it at the entire time, like the the spaces you have to traverse get further and further, and the things you can throw in the water get less and less, um, and it gets more and more unnerving. And there's one part where you make a mad dash to a door to to get out of the area. Yeah. And you open the door, and it's a long hallway with water, but nothing else. Oh, so you can't. It yeah. just it becomes a chase. Yeah, and it just becomes a chase. And <laughs> it splash, 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 splash. Yeah, <laughs> it, it the the music kicks up and mm. you're just running and things go weird and like you end up taking too many right turns during the chase and it like you're you're going down a hall and you turn right and then you turn right and then you turn right and you turn right. You turn right and you're like, I'm, am I going in circles? And well, what's going on? Wow. You go through doors and then it's over. And there's there's no explanation really as to what the hell that just was. That's crazy. And I think it's it's one of the most well done moments that I've experienced in horror games. Um, just because the ramp up and the feeling it gives you, and then it just it's it, if you haven't experienced it, and it's not like I'm giving away a jump scare or anything like. I knew it was coming um, when I was playing it the first time, and it still got to me, and that says a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess my uh, oh my. So on that same note, I, I, I am a fan of that studio, and mm -hmm. I feel that Soma, um, which is kind of their next game, I, they were sort of involved in Amnesia Two, mm -hmm. not as much as I think they were with Amnesia One. Um, but they made Soma, which is kind of a sci-fi horror kind of experience. Oh, okay. But the horror in Soma isn't so much like there's monsters. You have to hide from monsters. I mean, it's it's a game by that studio. They made Amnesia. They made uh, Penumbra, the Indigo Prophecy. Oh, I played Indigo Prophecy. Yeah, I like that game. Uh, so. It kind of has that same kind of gameplay. Like okay. You, you're yeah. you're not going to take on the monsters. No, no. Um, it's, it's very story driven. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's not really the horror in Soma. The horror in Soma is what the game does to you. Um, mm. How what it makes you think. Um, it's it's not so much supernatural horror as it is existential horror. Okay. Um, and another game that does that quite well is um, Observer, I believe is what it's called. Observer. It's kind of a cyberpunk. Um, you're an observer, and you have the ability to uh, connect to people's brains to like pull out memories. Mm -hmm. um, so you're you're kind of like a specialized cop, and you're like, oh, did this person? you know sell those drugs and then you tackle a guy you stun him you connect to his brain and you, you find, find out. out yeah right. well there's murders and things going on in an apartment complex so you spend time connecting to dead people's brains or dying people's oh. brains and when you connect to the brain it's not like a little movie plays it's like you're there experiencing what was experienced mm -hmm. and in these dying brains there things are really wild and yeah. it it it's similar to soma and it ends up being more of an existential horror kind of thing um i don't i don't think it's quite as well done as soma um 
Soma is the kind of game that after you finish it and you you watch the ending and you watch the credits and then you just kind of sit there and you just think um observer didn't really do that for me um but it has a great atmosphere and a great kind of uh uh presentation i guess yeah um a few quick others that are my favorites just just because uh, like i said i want to try to recommend games people may not have played yeah um and i mean this one if you're a fan of horror games you've probably heard of it um yumi nikki uh it's a japanese developed uh rpg maker game that it sounds lame when you say it but it's 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 well done um it's not so much story driven as it's just creepy environments and you exploring the creepy environments but it does a lot with that um another one that i want to recommend is a point and click adventure game called the white chamber um i think it's still free actually so it it's definitely worth a play um it's a point and click game but it's very reminiscent of silent hill um i don't want to give a whole lot away about it because it's it's definitely well done right um i i guess the only other one that i can think of that you know that i want to suggest to people is a game called paranormal um i don't think it's free anymore um i think it's actually for sale on steam now but not for very much um and the premise is you're you're in a haunted apartment and um you have a camera and you're trying to capture the paranormal activity on camera oh okay so your um, camera is your weapon yeah well or the, sort of uh, yeah uh, you don't really have a weapon against what's going on yeah. but most of what's going on is kind of benign until you start to poke at it i got you, I got you. um and it, it's it's got some really interesting mechanics because the haunting is sort of random Mm -hmm. but it also has a cause and effect element so things you do perturb the haunting and then your reactions to how the haunting happens make certain things like for instance uh, i don't want to give too much away but if things happen and you run away from them then there's probably a higher chance that the haunting will use that against you more. I get, yeah. Um, it's got a really good creepy atmosphere and pretty interesting mechanics. It's it's more of an experience than a game. There's there's a bit of a narrative that you can pick out of what's going on. Um, if you're the kind of person that likes to dig into stuff like that. Yeah. But it's definitely more of a uh, you know kind of ex- something that you experience. Right. So. Right. Um, but that's. I'm, I'm going to stop myself now because I could <laughs> I could ramble about horror games for a while, and um, I I know there's probably people that are just like oh he's going on about a bunch of crap and have already clicked off and whatever. Um, nah. It, I mean, if y'all enjoy this kind of stuff, us yeah. talking about games um, or movies or anything like that, I mean, let us know. Um, yeah. We we love to talk about stuff that we're passionate about. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, and this is something we've actually kind of sat and talked about doing some different things for the for the channel. So right. just let us know when we, you know, we want you to to give us some input so we can give it right back. Right. You know, because you know we do this because we love it. We have a passion, and um, you know, with for you guys and also creators with other creators. So right. again, we want to shout out uh, Douglas Beamer for uh, you know putting us in this horror tag. As awesome, is really good timing. Yes. Um, um, his handle once again is at seven minutes or less. Um, go over there. He, he does reviews on movies, all sorts of things. So check that out, and then make sure you check us out. Also, um, you know, if you haven't, just share us out there. Second Players Show. That's our handle at Second Players Show, and the Second Players on Twitter. So other than that, thank you for uh, sitting back and watching this, mm-hmm. and we look to do more for you. So thank you so much. <laughs>